Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a tutor and two students discussing the crop rice. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good morning, everyone. So, following on from our tutorial on European agriculture last week, Daisy and Eric are going to talk about the most commonly grown crop in Asia, which is, of course, rice. Eric, can you tell us what you've been working on? Yes, yeah, sure. We've been looking at the role of rice in a number of countries, how it's grown, ways of increasing production. As I'm sure you know, rice is the staple diet throughout Asia and, in fact, 90% of the world's rice is grown and eaten there. Daisy's got some background on that. Um, well, rice was originally a wild plant which started out in the tropical regions of Asia. But there are literally hundreds of varieties today and each with different qualities. Uh, for instance, one will survive floods, while another will grow in relatively dry conditions. A third has a really lovely smell. But wherever it grows, rice needs a lot of water. What do you mean by a lot? Well, it takes about 5,000 litres to get a kilogram of rice. This can be supplied either naturally or by irrigation. And as most rice-growing countries suffer from unpredictable weather, including drought, water management really is the key. Research has become so important now that each rice-growing country in Asia has its own research institute. Whether we're talking about Japan, China or Bangladesh, and they're all coordinated by a group in the Philippines called the International Rice Research Institute. Interesting. Bangladesh, for instance, has been successfully using different rice varieties and fertilizers for 30 years. But because it's such a flat, delta country, it's very difficult for the water to drain away after the monsoon season. So they need to find special rice crops that can survive the floods. And with global warming, the situation is more urgent than ever. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 25 to 30. Now I'd like to move on to our comparative study. As you can imagine, China is the world's biggest rice-producing country. Collectively, the Chinese people probably eat more than 3 billion bowls of rice every day. Quite a statistic. Mm. And of course, rice plays an important cultural role too. We then compared China to Thailand. You know, even though Thailand only has about 64 million people, it's the world's number one exporter of rice, not China, as you might imagine. Is that so? Yes, they send their rice everywhere, in particular to Europe, as well as Africa and the Middle East. Apparently, the fact that jasmine rice is growing in popularity is one reason why Thailand's rice export industry is doing so well. People want something a bit different. And, of course, Thailand is well suited to rice growing good climatic conditions and lots of fresh water. Going back to China for a minute, we should mention that at the Rice Research Institute in Huangzhou, they're working on ways of improving rice yields using less water. By yields, you mean the amount they can grow? Yes. They're trying to find ways to get more rice from less land, improve the taste, but also have other things in it besides carbohydrates so that it's healthier, better for you. Good idea, considering it's the staple food. And then you've got Japan, which is totally self-sufficient when it comes to rice. 
This is basically because they have a high tariff on imported rice, so everyone buys the homegrown product, and they don't export much. Yes, but you know, even though rice is a kind of sacred crop there, consumption is only half what it was in the 1960s. This trend isn't evident in Thailand or China. Interesting that you mentioned how rice is almost sacred in Japan, because I believe in Thailand it also plays an important cultural role. Absolutely, they have the royal ploughing ceremony every year, which the king always attends. And he actually scatters a new stock of seed to the farmers, who pour into Bangkok for the event. What about the global interest in organic farming? Is there such a thing as organically grown rice? Yes, indeed, and the Japanese are getting quite a taste for it. Apparently, there's an experimental farm near the city of Akita in the Japanese rice belt, famous for its sake, by the way, which has pioneered organic rice production, and now it's sold all across the country. It's a bit like the recent popularity of jasmine rice in Thailand, but that's for the export market, of course. Interesting how attitudes change, isn't it? That is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.